Huh, I guess it's time to go to a con. Magicon Chicago was announced, and I figured that this would be a good year to finally go to one. I was planning on mainly walking around looking at all the things and buying some cards if I saw anything I needed. My girlfriend Kelsey picked a great cosplay to go as, Sir Ginger the Meal Lender. She asked me if I wanted to cosplay with her, and since I'd never done it, I agreed. I figured it'd be a great first time cosplay since it was an easier one, because while she planned to go as a humanoid Sir Ginger to avoid being a mascot suit, I would go as Bernard, Ginger Sculptor. The big task for me was Sir Ginger's Fork, which required a stop at the hobby shop. We acquired Plasti Dip, EVA foam, and paints. Since the fork is pretty large, I decided to go with a design that utilized magnets to allow the prop to slot in and out of itself for easy transport. Hobby and hardware supplies in hand, I was ready to begin my part. Kelsey had her fabrics and supplies for the cosplays ordered, and when they arrived, she worked her seamstress magic and put together Sir Ginger's dress. To create the gumdrops found on Sir Ginger, she used plastic half spheres as well as gotcha machine balls to get the right shape. After spray painting them pink, she applied glue and covered them with glitter. This gave the gumdrops the sugar-coated look, but glitter is notorious for being unwieldy. To keep the glitter from falling off and making a huge mess, the gumdrops were shrink-wrapped to keep them sealed and give a sugary, sleek look to them. Suddenly, the convention was two weeks out, Kelsey was almost done, and I had a corner of the room filled with supplies and nothing to show for it. While she worked on styling her wig to match Sir Ginger, I immediately got to work on the fork. I designed a stencil for the top part of the fork, traced and cut it out, and got to the EVA foam. I cannot cut things out to save my life, so it was Kelsey to the rescue on getting the EVA foam pieces ready. I cut strips of balsa wood to put between both pieces of the top so that it wasn't floppy and had some strength to it. Once it was together, I got to work designing a stencil for the bottom half, the handle part. It needed heft and structure to it, so I used the remaining balsa wood to add solidity to the inside and to hold the PVC pipe in place. To make it separable, I followed a tutorial from Kamui Cosplay on how to magnetize props. In the future, I would use bigger magnets, but it did the job and was surprisingly easy. Once all of the glue dried, it was time for extensive sanding. Last but not least, the fork was painted. And then, after several late nights of constant work and annoying the shit out of my neighbors with Dremel noises, it was done. It wasn't the most pretty prop. It certainly wasn't flawless. I saw places where the paint wasn't quite right, some areas of the top had weird bulging due to the glue I used, and 90% of the techniques I used to put it together were new to me. But, in the end, I completed it. It was ready for the con. And I stood there, basking in a job well done. Ah, oh, shit. So with the fort completed, we loaded up the SUV and began our trip from central Iowa to Chicago. Do you like this scenery? Well, get used to it. This is what you're gonna see for another well, not the entire way, but like for another, like I'd say about two, three hours, it's gonna be this. Ooh, but maybe, maybe. See, it's hilly now. Maybe it'll be flat later, because we're kind of, we moved out of central towards eastern, so it's hilly right now, but it might get flat. Um, that's the real difference. If you're in the central part of the state, it's flat. And if you're in the corners of the state, it's less flat. Um, I could go into detail as to why, but I don't want to but I teach, I teach about it. It was basically, you know the thing that killed the Titanic? Yeah, well it used to exist on Iowa, and as it left. After some driving, we made it to our halfway point, the world's largest truck stop, the best place to go for bootleg DVDs. Like this one I got, with such classics as The Legend of Cirilla, Kiara, Dragon Guardians, and of course, the true story of Puss in Boots. Note the apostrophe N versus in. That's how you know it's legit. Anyways, Kelsey and I switched seats and we made our way to Illinois. Goodbye, Owa. So long, Owa. Welcome to Illinois. It looks no different. The change will happen as soon as we hit the city state known as Chicago. There's more potholes 
That's true, there are more potholes, weirdly enough. And finally, Chicago. Your politics bore me, mortals. Honestly, Chicago gets a bad rap. I am a huge fan of the city skyline. Growing up in rural Iowa, the first time I gazed at it, I couldn't take my eyes off it. It was unlike anything I'd ever seen. Though, the city still needs to learn that hot dogs are finger food and soaking the bun is not finger friendly. Hey, just a quick side note, would like to say that I am aware that there's a difference between a hot dog and a beef sandwich, and they soak the bun for beef sandwiches. I showed this part to Kelsey, and she said I looked very stupid, so just adding that clarification here. It's still finger food, it's still stupid, carry on. After a long day's travel, we passed out and got a good night's sleep. Day one was upon us. We got ourselves costumed, makeup, and hairsprayed and made our way down to the convention center. Our first stop for day one was the murder mystery area. There was a lot of cool stuff to look at and the area's aesthetic was terrific. However, Kelsey and I were unable to solve even the first part of the mystery, so we just enjoyed the scenery. A big thing we needed to do today was to get merch from the official merch store. And I'll be honest, this took up a large majority of day one. It took us three and a half hours to get through the line. On the bright side, it was right next to Mana Stage, so we got to see the fashion show, which was disappointing as it was just merchandise, and the preview panel. I excitedly took photos of the spoiled cards and sent them to Discords I'm in until I realized they were streaming it and everyone watching at home could take better screenshots than I could photo. Oh well, at least they were posted. Finally, we made it to the front of the line and got some t-shirts and other knickknacks, including the Magicon Chicago Ponder. After all that standing, we needed a break, so we went back to the hotel and got food. After food, we headed back to the con to meet up with some friends. On the way, we found a much cooler convention happening next door. Kelsey, we in the wrong hobby. It can be a hobby or a lifestyle or a job. It depends on how serious you take it, but my God, that looks awesome. <laughs> Consider the bar raised. <laughs> Be like, oh, what'd you get from Magic on Chicago? Well, you'll know. Oh my god, a giant tooth. Look, Elsie. Visit us at booth 1618. What, the tooth? Is he's alive? This is just his display. You can actually meet the man, the myth, the legend at booth 1618. This is. What? Look at that. This is like. Oh my god, it's, it's still going. After taking a photo of myself at the far superior con, the Chicago Dental Society Midwinter Meeting, we continued on. We met up with our pals Woodsy and Cole, who had something to show us. Woodsy had gotten his Bearscape playmat signed and tattooed by as many artists as he could find at the con, making it easily the most expensive thing with him. We hung out, Cole and I played some games of Canadian Highlander, and then we all headed out for another night's sleep. All in all, day one was pretty underwhelming, but that was due to the wait for the merch store, so I was pretty pumped for day two. The high point of the day was gazing at the dentist convention and seeing all of the product displays in the distance, as well as the giant tooth. Are you showing that I have to eat with a spoon? <laughs> I gotta just scoop it. <laughs> scoop it with my chicken tender. <laughs> <laughs> Day one was kind of a wash for entrance footage, so I'm making up for it here. The way in was a skywalk with a lot of cool magic decorations, as well as overhead banners that themed it for murders at Karlov Manor. Before we walked into the main area, we passed by a free play area next to the Bro Tour. The Command Zone sign had Garrick on it, so naturally, Kelsey had to get a photo with her biggest nemesis as Sir Ginger. I could not imagine being a Pro Tour player and having all the free play noise right next to you the entire time. I do remember hearing something about Tiger Woods' dad blasting a boombox as he practiced, so maybe they were used to it. Since we hadn't been there the day before, our first stop was Creator Central and the Free Play Arena. One of the big complaints of Magic on Chicago was that there was not enough playroom, and I completely agree. Even though I didn't personally go to play with con-goers, if you did, it was cramped to the point where folks were playing downstairs instead. In the future, Magic Con needs more space for play. We made sure to check out the artist area, which had lines that were hours long, but given the lineup, that was expected. Vampire GF, yeah. Vampire Well, yeah, that's Kellen's arc. 
Kellen's a cosplayer who along the way picked up a vampire GF. We did a bit of sightseeing at the themed objects and merchandise they had on display for the con and checked out the prize area for ticketed play. There were some really cool options, especially some of the oversized cards. Oh, there's where the Mox Opal was, the Kobe. Uh, yeah, why were they so picture? Oh, because the card's banned and modern. Thank you. Thank you. Because the card's banned and modern. Oh. I played when this thing was legal. It sucked. I kind of do, yeah. <laughs> yeah, I kind of do. I played Bogles into this fucking matchup. Kelsey snapped a photo of me overcoming my arch enemy from 2017 to 2018, and while walking around, we ran into our friend Colt. I played in a modern Winna box, and I beat this creativity player really fucking bad. Like, it wasn't even close. And he just looks at me with his cold eyes. He's like, what beats your day? At that time, I was like very frustrated with Ryan's. And so I'm like, oh, let me tell you what beats this guy. Like, I will tell you everything about that beats this guy. And I ran into him again. And now that Rhinos is like a tier one nag, and like the best thing in the format, I just have like, what does beat my nag? <laughs> yeah, what you know what? You're me? right. <laughs> and uh, I saw him playing yesterday, and he was playing Tron. So uh, <laughs> that's one of the bad matches. Unfortunately, while talking with Colton, I got distracted and missed Rebel Sun, shown here one of my favorite YouTubers. We figured now was a good time to eat, so we got food and headed downstairs to sit. On the way, another guy gave us four Ravnica Remastered Draft Boosters because he also liked our cosplays. Again, a very kind thing for him to do and something I was not expecting to happen at all, much less twice. After lunch, we ran into Woodsy and Cole again, who got a photo with the fork and one of my spoons. Look at me as I kill you. <laughs> Look at me as I kill you. <laughs> A large portion of day two was us looking at all the vendors. Tons of old power and reserve list cards, not to mention expensive foils, and even a booth with old playtest cards, which were really awesome to look at. It was also nice to see vendors that were carrying cards under $500 so we could pick a couple of things up for ourselves. It was just a really cool experience getting to look at all of these old cards and packs together. After that, we watched the Am I the Arch Enemy panel, hosted by Joseph Michael Kilcar and Levi Perry. They went over Commander Game scenarios from Reddit and talked back and forth with the audience about who is in the wrong in the situation. Unsurprisingly, in all but one of the scenarios, the arch enemy was a blue player. And last but not least, we ended the day by watching the cosplay competition. Tons of talent was on display at all levels, and it was a great experience. i never seen a cosplay competition before, so it was pretty cool seeing how different people tackled different characters. And. That was it for Magicon Chicago. Magicon Chicago was my first Magicon. There were flaws, sure, but as with many new experiences, I will look back on it with fondness. It also marked my first time cosplaying, which was a lot of fun. A huge thank you to everyone at the con who took photos of or with us. We were both blown away by all the positive reactions to our cosplay. With the con over and back at home, there was only one thing left to do. I figured I should do something to celebrate successful cons, and naturally, I chose the stupidest thing. Tricking out of towners into drinking a shot of Malort is a Chicago tradition that Kelsey introduced me to for my birthday last year, so why not continue it now? Pussy. That, fuck you. <laughs> He's ready to go to the next one. He's ready for his Malort. Well, at least the cats are ready for the next one.